So in this video we're going to be looking at the difference between old Citron and new Citron. So this Citron right here that I'm pointing to is the newest build of Citron. Here's the name of the build right here. Now this one on the left, that's an old build of Citron. It's known as Canary Refresh and it came out I think in March of 2025. And here's the name of the build right here. So this is the old one and this is the new one. So we are going to demo Breath of the Wild in both and you're going to see the performance difference. And I'm going to use the exact same settings, same driver, everything. So I'm using the same add-ons, the two DLCs, update 1.6 on the Ultra Cam mod, and I'm using turn up 24.3.0 revision 9v2 as the GPU driver and in the graphics settings the only thing I'm changing is um, asynchronous shaders and I'm turning them on so I'm doing all this the same resolution is going to be 1x at 1x resolution you'll get like around 30 FPS sometimes a little bit under and then at 0.75x you'll get usually 30 and above 30 to 35 so yeah, this is the old Citron. This is the build of Citron that uh, I used in my YouTube video. If you've ever seen my Breath of the Wild video that I made back when this was the current build of Citron, and I was getting 30 to 35 FPS in Breath of the Wild. This is the same one, so we're going to see the same performance. But at 1x resolution, you get around 30, 28 to 30. Um, but I just want to show you for comparison. If you haven't seen that video yet, you do get really good performance with this old version of Citron. So I'm just going to test out the same exact save files, same area, it's just a new game. Um, over here by the Temple of Time. If you face Hyrule Castle, the frame rate always drops. And if you face away, from Hyrule Castle, the frame rate usually gets a little bit higher, but you get the point. You can see how this, how nicely this runs in the old Citron. There we go, facing Hyrule Castle. You can see the frame rate uh, decrease a little bit, and then as you look away, the frame rate comes back up. That's the, that will always be the case. So let's exit this uh, old Citron, and then let's switch over to the new one. So in the new build, the newest build of Citron actually has like an Eden's Veil, like a, it's called the Zep Zone, but otherwise I'm using the same add-ons, um, the same graphic settings, same resolution, 1x, asynchronous shaders are on. And I think what I'll do is I'll just go to the... Uh, Citron's Veil or Zep Zone and just, you know, turn all these new features onto the default setting that they come with. So as if you didn't even touch it. So I'm just going to put them all to the global settings. You can try to change these. Honestly, the more I tinkered with them, the worse that the performance got. The best performance was on default anyways. So, I mean, kind of the whole point of this video is to show you how new development and new emulators, especially on secret console, are not always a good thing for our device. And for the Snapdragon 865, it's an older chipset, and then I don't think the newer Switch emulators are accompanying or like accommodating our devices and our old chipsets. I think they're building the newest versions for newer chipsets. That's my theory about why the frame rate is lower with this, with this uh, newer version. I could be wrong, I still don't really fully understand it. Um, with Windows emulators, I get better results with newer ones often, so the same rule doesn't really apply to Windows for, what for whatever reason. But on Eden and on Citron, the newer versions are both slower. As you can see, it's just slower. So with Eden 0.0.4, I've noticed that Breath of the Wild performance is slower, even with the same settings, same drivers, same mods, same updates as I would be um, using on the old build of Eden, which is 0.0.2 pre-alpha. That's actually faster for our device, for our chipset. 
So the Retroid Pocket Flip 2, the Retroid Pocket 5, the uh, Retroid Pocket Mini, they all use the Snapdragon 865. It's an older chipset, it's not a bad chipset, but the newer emulators might make a fool of it uh, because they're not... I mean, you have to remember, these are third-party software developers. So they're just people like you and me who probably buy these handhelds and are testing it on, on the current handheld. And at the time that these emulators came out, the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 was the newest and the coolest handheld on the market. The Retroid Pocket 5, the Retroid Pocket Flip 2. So I think that's why this is optimized. So for Switch emulation, for some reason, you got to use older versions if you want to use Eden or Citron. Um, fortunately, Sudachi doesn't even have new versions because they got shut down by Nintendo. They got DMCA'd. So the only version of Sudachi you can pretty much get, the most recent version is pretty old, and it'll work really nice and get really good performance with our chipset as well. And if you want this version of Citron, this old Citron that I'm using in this video, head on over to Internet Archive and you can find it. It's called Citron Canary Refresh 0.6.1. It's available. You just have to click on the Show All button um, underneath like the zip right there. And then you'll see the options for downloading. And near the middle, you'll notice um, .apk. Those are the Android application files. So I like to use the Antutu one that's a more powerful version of the mainline release but if it's not compatible with some games just use the mainline release and I will be adding a link to that internet archive page on our subreddit the r slash retroid pocket flip 2 subreddit so if you click on the actual name of the subreddit if you're on mobile or if you're on the Android app just click on these letters here it'll bring up a menu and that menu is called the sidebar and it will have a lot of links for emulators and the secret console links I will put a little tab underneath Citron for Canary Refresh for the version that's optimized for the Retroid Pocket Flip 2 and the Snapdragon 865 family.